हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द स्लाइड डाइजेशन टॉपिक स्लाइड डाइजेशन इज रिक्वायर्ड फॉर व्हाट वी हैड स्टडीड द एक्टिवेटेड स्लज प्रोसेस इन व्हिच वी हैड टेकन आउट द स्लज फ्रॉम द सेकेंडरी क्लेरिफायर नाउ फॉर द डाइजेशन ऑफ दैट स्लज वी नीड टू सेंड दैट स्लज इन द स्लज डाइजेस्टर ओके नाउ व्हाट विल हैपन इन द स्लज डाइजेशन वेस्ट वाटर स्लज इज अ कंसीडरेबल हैजार्ड टू एनवायरमेंट एंड मस्ट बी रेंडर्ड प्रायर टू डिस्पोजल इट मींस दैट वी नीड टू ट्रीट दैट स्लज बिफोर इट्स डिस्पोजल नाउ द स्लज फ्रॉम द प्राइमरी सेडिमेंटेशन टैंक इज कॉल्ड रॉ स्लज और प्राइमरी स्लज रॉ स्लज इज मोर ऑब्जेक्शनेबल एज इट कंटेन्स अबाउट 95% मॉइस्चर कंटेंट इट मींस दैट द स्लज फ्रॉम द primary sedimentation tank contains much amount of moisture of the range of 95% now sludge from secondary sedimentation tank contains 96 to 98% moisture it means that the sludge of secondary sedimentation tank contains large amount of moisture in it so sludge from pst has excess organic matter and sludge from secondary sedimentation tank gave excess biomass it means that the sludge which is taken from the primary sedimentation process generally contains large amount of organic matter but the secondary sedimentation tank sludge generally contains excess biomass okay now the sludge digestion serves both to reduce the volume of thickened sludge as well as to render the remaining solids inert and relatively pathogen free this goal can be achieved aerobically or anaerobically okay now the sludge digestion process now how sludge is digested and what is the process of sludge digestion we will go for the sludge digestion process okay now when sludge is digested anaerobically the volume of original sludge is reduced to approximately 1/3 of the original value it means that we had digested the sludge and its volume reduced to approximately 1/3 of the original value now in which part the sludge gets broken out the sludge gets broken into three parts there is a digested sludge it means the solid part the supernatant liquid that means the liquid part and the gases of decomposition which will be released to the atmosphere okay now out of the total solids originally present 70% are volatile it means that if we burn that solid it will escape into the atmosphere and remaining 30% are fixed that is inorganic solids now volatile solids are measured by an equipment called muffle furnace because it is liberated into the atmosphere so we just contain or we just capture that in a muffle furnace and we can determine the amount of volatile solids present in that water or in that sludge of the total gases produced 65% are methane and 30% are carbon dioxide methane is a gas which is largely present in the sludge okay when sludge is digested anaerobically then methane will liberate out from that sludge so the maximum gas that will be produced in a settled sludge is or the decomposed sludge is 65% methane and 30% carbon dioxide and remaining are gases like h2s n2 etc now the heat content of methane is or its calorific value is 8600 kilo calorie per meter cube which is very high now the supernatant liquid has a high bod of 1500 to 3000 mg per liter hence it should be retreated along with the raw sewage it means that for the treatment of supernatant liquid we had to send this liquid again in the activated sludge process or in the treating filter where it can be treated with the raw sewage once again okay now that is the sludge digestion process now we can move to the septic tank you all had seen the septic tank in which two types of access is provided on the ground level and a large container or a large chamber is connected or constructed deep inside the earth in which there is a baffle wall which is provided just like this okay and two pipe systems will be there one as inlet and another is outlet now it is designed as an ordinary settling tank except that detention time is 12 to 36 hour it means that we need to send the raw sewage again after 12 to 36 hours with an extra provision for digestion of sludge by and aerobic bacteria now in septic tank there will be no dissolved oxygen present in that water so all the process will be anaerobic now directly raw sewage is entered in the septic tank 
द स्लज सेटल्स एट द बॉटम ऑफ द टैंक एंड ऑयल एंड ग्रीस राइजेस टू द टॉप ऑफ द सरफेस एस इस कम ऑल द Oil and grease will comes to the top of the water surface and it it will known as scum. Now the settled sewage is allowed to remain in the tank for six to twelve months, during which they are digested anaerobically. The settled sewage, which is allowed to remain in the septic tank, will be left for six to twelve months for its complete decomposition. Okay, and the decomposition will be taking place under anaerobic condition. Now the scum remaining in the tank. Helps in holding back odor and act as a sort of heat insulation, which aids the bacterial action. Okay, now that is the septic tank. Now we can see the note of the septic tank that flow if sewage is taken as forty to seventy liter per capita per day. It means that if sewage is only allowed in the septic tank, then the flow is forty to seventy liter per capita per day. But with the sewage, if we allowed sludge also, okay. If sludge is also allowed, if sludge is also allowed with sewage, then the flow is taken as ninety to one fifty liter per capita per day. Now detention time we had already discussed that is twelve to thirty six hours. Length to width ratio is generally two to three. Depth is one point two to one point eight meter. Now cleaning is generally done in six to twelve months. That is. Six months to one year. Now, one of the major problem of septic tank is that when the decomposition of the sludge taking place, then the raw sewage again enters into the septic tank and it will disturb the decomposition of the organic matter. Okay. Now, that is one of the most important problem in the septic tank that during the decomposition of the sludge, the raw sewage again enters into that and it will disturb the decomposition of the sludge okay or the organic matter now we will see the another method of decomposition of organic matter that is known as imhoff tank now an imhoff tank is an improvement over septic tank why because in which the incoming sewage is not allowed to get mixed up with the sludge produced and the outgoing effluent is not allowed to carry with it large amount of organic load as in the case of septic tank it means that in the imhoff tank there will be two story like this and we allowed the sewage to move to the central chamber by opening the gate like this when this sewage comes in the central portion we just kept this gate closed and not allow the another sewage to mix with the previous sewage now what will happen during the decomposition of this sewage no sewage is allowed to enter into this chamber that is the central chamber during this the during this time all the organic matter will decompose anaerobically and the sludge will be taken out from this pipe as well as liquid is also taken out from this pipe now after the decomposition of the organic matter in that central portion when the decomposition is completed now we allow the next sewage to enter into the central portion by opening these gates okay now that is the improvement over septic tank that's why the efficiency of imhoff tank is very large as compared to the septic tank they are sometimes also known as two story digestion tanks it removes 60 to 65 percent of solids and 30 to 40 percent of bod now note will be there that the length and width ratio is 3 to 5 Length should never be greater than thirty meter. Total depth is nine to eleven meter, and detention period is two to four hour, which is very less as compared to the septic tank. Okay, now that is the imhoff tank. Now we will move to the next important parameter, that is the manhole. Now manhole is already provided in pipelines as well as in sewers for its inspection purpose. Now, what is the construction of manhole? We will see the construction of manhole. This is the ground level. Okay. This is the ground level, and inside the ground level, we had constructed the manhole, and the top of the manhole is covered with a access gate. Okay, now from the top of the manhole, we just provide a pipe having mica flap valve here, having mica flap valve at the top. Now at the bottom, there will be an intercepting trap like this. Okay, and there will be the sewer line. Okay, there will be the sewer line connecting this and this. Okay. Now what will happen? Fresh air from the atmosphere will enter through this inlet into the manhole. Fresh air from the atmosphere will enter into the inlet through the manhole. Okay. Fresh air will enter into the manhole from this pipe like this by opening the mica flap valve in the downward direction. Now what will happen? 
the waste which is coming from this inlet pipe will mixed with this fresh air and the H2S carbon dioxide and methane will be present in that manhole. Now they will try to escape from the top. Okay, they will try to escape from the top, but mica flap valve is a one way valve and it does not allow the flow of harmful gases into the atmosphere from the mica flap valve. Now, what will happen? The, all the gases will be liberated, all the gases, all the gases will be liberated from the vent pipe which is connected like this here. Okay, so all the gases will come in this pipe and it will be removed from this pipe into the atmosphere at a very high height. Okay, at a very high height. So, the, the non-important gases or the harmful gases that is H2S, methane, carbon dioxide will be liberated from this vent pipe into the atmosphere and only the fresh air will inlet from this mica valve. Okay, now the this air along with foul gases will finally escape out from the cowl provided at the head of the vent pipe at the head of the vent pipe there will be a cowl okay now at least 2 meter above the roof level it means that we have to escape all the harmful gases from the vent pipe at a height of at least 2 meter above the roof level now a mica flap valve is provided at the head of the fresh air inlet with slits for admitting fresh air, we had already discussed it, which is so hinged at the top that it is easily open inside the to admit the fresh air, but it closes with the slightest back pressure of gases from the manhole to avoid the escape of foul gases into the street or the house courtyard. It means that we just allow all the harmful gases that is the foul gases to escape from the vent pipe only and we don't allow any of the foul gases to escape from the mica flap valve okay now that is the complete manhole and we had discussed all the process that is sludge digestion manhole septic tank and imhoff tank thank you very much students